good day to you, and welcome back to the Higher Grounds podcast. I'm still somehow here in the host chair, and uh, I just I guess he when I get here and won't move, I guess it kind of works that way. And uh, so we're going to be picking up and continuing some things we've talked about here in just a little bit. But before we do, Brother Andy, how are you doing? Yes. That's exactly right. Well, we're glad that you're, st- you, you know, yes is a good, yes is an agreeable word, meaning yeah. that you're agreeing. So that is a, that's, that's productive. Things <clears throat> that, are getting that book, better. That Brother Mike, let me borrow that uh, friends and people. Yeah. And influence. I, I read it for the 11th time this week. <laughs> yes. And he said, see, you said it. Uh, he, it said in there that, that yes is a friendly word. You use words like yes. Yes. I appreciate you. Yes. Have a great day. You too. Chick fil A, all yes. that kind of stuff. This is coming, <laughs> this is coming right along. That's right. Yeah. That's and they, right. And they, they emphasize the voice inflection. Mm hmm. Yes. That's the, and um, you know, kind of the, the wink of the eye. Yeah. yeah. Well, how would Miss Beverly respond after being so opposite most of the time? Yes. If you did that, she would be like, she'd start calling preachers around the country, pray for my husband, something's happened to him. Yeah, or she's already accused me of stuff. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. that's exactly what she'd be doing. So, how's, how's, how's Galilee Baptist Church doing? We're doing, yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking We're doing about. good. Yeah. You're doing good. So this is one of your favorite times of year. It starts cooling off, deer hunting. Mm-hmm. My neck starts swelling the other day. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I got you. I got yeah. you. Segway out of that now. Segway out of that. Yeah. There. Yeah, that's exactly right. One of those no, that's my time of year. But I mean, I haven't even been in the, the deer stand. Yeah. Believe that or not, because I've been so busy, but you have. I have been and, in the deer and stand. And Matthew has. Brother Matthew's been laying Brother down. Dexter hasn't. You know, I haven't no. killed anything yet, but I have uh, have a freezer full of fresh deer meat, so it's all it's all good. Brother Michael doesn't really like deer meat, but I, I like some deer meat. Well, I love it. I do. I, I like, really I like it. working it in and, and using it. And so I like it. So, Brother Michael, how are you doing, buddy? Man, I'm doing fantastic. How Now, you're you're a big football fan, aren't you? You can pull for the... Yes, he got, is. Tar Heels yeah. there on there. Yes, he is. How's your Tar Heels Yes, doing, he is. And, he's and, a football and, fan, and he's big. And, and, yes, right. <laughs> shame. It's uh, his automatic shame right there. My just, Tar Heels has been a little bit of a disappointment this year. Yeah, yeah. that's what I would say. Really? Uh, not a little bit. Maybe like a big bit. I got you. Yeah. And you, your team is the Panthers, right? Yeah, I like the Panthers. I got you. I got you. Now, some of it throw off, but uh, football is kind of one of those, you and uh, Juliana, y'all. y'all. We, we try to catch at least a game a year, right. um, you know, at least a college game. game. And then if uh, in the NFL, if, if they play on a Thursday or Monday night, we'll catch one of those too. Okay. So that's something yeah. we've done together for quite you. a few years now. Yeah. How's your kids doing? You got your I mean, Man. kids are growing up. Yeah. They're great quick. kids. Yeah. yeah. No good. kidding. They no really kidding. are. They got an ex- excellent mama. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they true. are, they are, they're that's doing true. well because of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Praise the Lord. That's Absolutely. Good. Church are doing well. Church is doing good. They still let me pastor there and I'm grateful. That's good. Yes, sir. That's, that's right. Well, we, we're glad you guys are holding down the fort at Lighthouse. What, right now, church. Michael Poindexter is one of the greatest men. He knows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's exact. I'm at least glad he ended it the way he felt about it. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that is not a true statement. I mean, it, by any stretch of the imagination, that is not a true now, statement. No, even he's got to own that man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. I see myself through just, you know, pretty realistic eyes. Yeah. Got a lot of work to do. We're, we're we're doing well. No I, rose-colored glasses for you, Frank. No, no sir. Not at I had all. someone ever met Andy, and he knocked him off my face. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Yep. I used to be positive. Yeah. We're we're doing well. Our kids are are, are, are growing up too. and uh, and moving into new areas. Lydia's uh, Lydia's teaching now. She's what teaching. About she's that? in college, and mm-hmm. Seth's her senior this year. He'll be graduating. I don't believe you're that old. Now I, look at your temples. And I know. I know. Starting to get a little grayish. I, well, if I don't keep my hair cut, you know, it, it does look awfully gray. But it's all good. Me and Preacher Fanny's trying. I'm trying to catch Preacher Fanny. Catch me. So, but, but he's I'm, been white-headed since he's 22. He does. He, he's yeah. He's 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 he grayed very early. Yeah. And, uh, oh, Mama B's graying up now, son. Really? She's headed toward the white-headed lady. I got you. Well, all that wisdom she's got. <laughs> That was a test. I was just going to see what he'd say. Right, right, right. I, I baited him yeah. just to see what he'd do, and he passed yeah. the test. So it's deer season. I understand about all that baiting. Uh, that's, that's exactly right. 
<laughs> We're glad you're back with us today. We have been uh, the last couple of weeks just uh, picking the brains of these men, talking about <laughs> a few, yeah, talking about a few things, and uh, but it's and uh, we've enjoyed that. And so I'm I'm going to go right back into that. We've I've had some questions given, and just tried to remember and write a few of these down. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with a with a doozy. All right, you ready? You doozy. guys ready for this mm -hmm. doozy? Mm -hmm. What is your definition? Because this gets used a lot. And I use it, and I'm going to continue to use it. But uh, what is your definition? You hear us use of old time religion. What is old time religion? How do you define that? And when we say that our church is sticking the old time way, what are what are we talking about, brother? Andy, why don't you why don't you jump in on that? Well, I think you have to. I think you have to ask the question before you define it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to ask the question, and I think this is the proper way to frame it. Um, how old fashioned is your old fashioned? That's right. <clears throat> That's good. I mean, it could That's be good. your old fashioned could go back to the turn of the century with the, you know, with the red back hymnal. Yeah. Or your old fashioned could go back to the soul winning movement of the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Not that we don't soul win anymore, but right, you understand right. the 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 emphasis. Crusade. Type. I think it the the old timey is is predicated. The term is predicated by. Uh, by your influences. Mm -hmm. um, and my definition to it through the years is um, my, my old fashioned doesn't go back to a hymn book. Mm -hmm. My old fashioned doesn't go back to a, you know, to Camp Zion, Myrtle, Mississippi in mm -hmm. the, the yesteryear. Sure. My old fashioned doesn't go back to Matthew Henry or Arthur Pink or whoever yeah. I read behind. Mm -hmm. My my definition of old fashioned goes back to um, what's contained between the the covers of the Word of God. Absolutely, and, you know there are a lot of people that that banter about the old fashioned way, mm -hmm. whose outward <clears throat> lives do not reflect oh, even yeah. scriptures like right. the you know, like we said earlier. We want, and, and I don't care what you do. It's it's irrelevant to me what you do. It, I believe in soul liberty. Do whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. But um, you, you can't banter about being old-fashioned and you avoid verses of Scripture like um, not with the plating of hair or the wearing of the gold, yeah. but the hidden man of the heart, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people who are flashy, flashy, flashy. Yeah. Who who want to claim to be old fashioned and right. it doesn't compute. Yeah, that's right. Good answer. Well, brother, brother Michael, what about you? What uh, as far as this the term old time really? And really, one good thing about brother Michael, and I think uh, I'm just not smart enough to do this, and brother Andy's too cantankerous to do this. But true, you're not a, afraid to step by the bounds. If it is something new, mm -hmm. just because it's new, it's not wrong. No. But you will, but still holding to what we would call old time religion. What? Yeah. How do you define that? I mean, he nailed it. I mean, for me, old time religion is what is described or contained within inside the pages of the Word of God. That's what makes it old fashioned or old time. It's just, uh, it's the way, the yeah. right way, the biblical way. Yeah. And um, you know, so that that would be my simple definition without yeah. needing to overly expound on it. Yeah. That's right. And being being <clears throat> having a conviction or saying this is what we are. Uh, leads us into saying, well, I, just a, a new Bible, a new word, a new tra a new worship that's not biblical. Mm -hmm. So what you have, that's why it transcends the ages in mm -hmm. the time. It just mm -hmm. doesn't change from when you were a boy to now who you are pastoring your church. You're still old-time religion because you're still holding to this Bible. That's what makes us fundamental. Is that right, Brother Andy? We're, yes, we're fundamental because this is our fundamental truth. Right, if it's yeah. in the Word of God, we, we try our best to practice it, it. And if it's not, then we don't bring it in our church. It's never mainstream. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just hard to stay it's with a book and just right. be completely acceptable mainstream, mm -hmm. um, which is why it kind of gets the you know the the the, uh, the idea that it's a, it's yesterday's news or it's old-fashioned, quote-unquote. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's what, when I, when, well, there, I, when I think about it, it's just a desire for biblical there is Christianity. This, yeah. There is this, you know, this um, movement, if you will, now to, to really poke fun of and make fun of uh, the terminology of being an old-fashioned church or an old-fashioned preacher or an old-fashioned yeah. religion or old-timey religion. And and I, I get that. I mean, I, I get the, I, I'm not for being snarky, and, nor am I for being more scornful, I guess sure. I can be snarky, but but I'm not bit for I hate scorners with a passion. Oh, absolutely, because the Bible hates them with a passion. Sure, but uh, the scorn comes really honestly because people that that throw that mantra about mm -hmm. 
their lives don't live up to it. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, yes. I, get, I get that. They're, they're take, so you got one side that's taking it light because they're a scorner. Then you got one side that's taking a lot, just sitting back, and they just they just make fun of it. They just kind of throw those those things. I don't really have time for either, three years. I don't long. have time for either one. Of them. <laughs> that's, that's about the mm-hmm. biggest bunch of silliness yeah. I've ever seen in my life. But uh, anyhow, so uh, thank you for that. We're we're going to move to the next because uh, I, I got a couple more that I really want to try to get in. Um, how do you how do you discern between how how can a young preacher in the church discern between when is it time to go out and preach out, fill in, you know? Be, and when does he need to be at home? When does he need to be around the home church helping, you know, fulfilling roles and things like that? Brother Michael, what, what, what's a good guideline there? I think the guideline is just uh, whatever parameters your pastor sets for you or allows Bingo. you to work in, Bingo. I think yeah, I think is 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 the is the MO on that just simply because if he tells you, you know, um, you know, I don't mind you going out, but you run it by me. Yeah. Um, or whatever the case may be, there may be a reason. There may be some guys in your area that may call you, but he knows if you get tangled up in that, it's going to hurt you in the long run. Right. Uh, exactly. Also, he may for development purposes, he may know that you're not quite ready yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had a yeah. young man I tried to help like that one time. He needed some maturation, mm-hmm. and uh, I was going to mature him. I set some. I even set some mile markers he could see with his eyes. Yeah. But, you know, so is that work, a word? Huh? Maturation me? is that a word? Yeah. You ain't never heard of that? No, I'm gonna look that up. Though. I'm gonna look at that. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. so I was trying to help him, but anyway, so. He uh, he he just he didn't he didn't want to hang in on the on the on the ride, yeah. and he ditched the system and uh, ended up um, suffering for it down the road. And yeah. you know, so I just think that's what it's about, man. It's just having a submitted enough heart to let your pastor play his role in your life and try to help you as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. you know, and you mentioned that that doesn't mean the pastor is your dictator. Isn't that? Do you have time to dictate anybody else's life? I do not. I don't, no, I don't have the time nor the desire. You're right, but that's, uh, you, if if that church is good enough for you to announce your call to preach under. Yep. That's where God's planted you, and mm-hmm. He's given you a pastor that that under shepherd in your life to help watch over you. And and He's if He's helped guide you this far, don't don't turn your back on Him because you now have a calling. Well, in the ministry. Here, here, yeah, here's my thing: Why is He your pastor if you can't trust He's got your best interest at heart? You shouldn't oh, even absolutely. be there. So if you're going to let Him be your pastor, then let Him do His job oh, and, and help guide you with His experience, His knowledge, and His prowess in the Word. Help you get to where maybe God's taking you. I mean, that's yeah. that's the way I see it. So let me let me play devil's advocate. Here. Good, yeah. And, and I time. believe I believe that, that this is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right person for the job. <laughs> Go ahead, my friend. So. There are young men, and I, I want to I want to be kind to them here. There are young men who do not have a pastor that takes interest in their calling mm. and does not take their responsibility to train those men seriously because yeah. it interferes with their schedule in their life. Mm-hmm. And for those young men, a lot of times they get lost in the cracks and they do some things that they wouldn't do or could, shouldn't have done mm-hmm. because they've had no guidance and yeah, no yeah. leadership. Yeah. And for that, I lay the blame on the pastor of yeah. the church uh, for not you know, uh, pouring his life into those that God has given him who have a call on their life. Help, mm-hmm. them, make, help them develop their yeah. gift. I had a young man yeah. several years ago. Um, he he called me up and, and he said, I'm, I'm going to drop by your church, young preacher. Uh, I said, Oh, okay, I guess. And so he came by. I mean, he could easily have made the church that he mm-hmm. he pastors in, or he, he he was out of. And he was on his way back from a meeting, was going to, instead of driving to his home church, dropped into my church. Yeah. Fine young man. And so during, uh, I, I embarrassed him. I didn't necessarily intend on embarrassing him, uh, but it did embarrass him. Um, and I'm still good friends with this young man to this day. Mm-hmm. Fine, fine young man. And um, when he came in, folks noticed him there, and I said, um, you didn't call your pastor and let him know that you were dropping into our services, so I called him for you. Mm -hmm. Well, when I called his pastor and let him know that he was in our services, he said, oh, okay, well, whatever. And what I have come to find out is this pastor doesn't take any time in training or bringing this yep. young man to maturation. Yeah. Yeah. I see you he used that word. Did. That's great. It is a real yeah. word. That's yeah. great. Uh, let me say brother Matt's here, brother Matt's pastor and he's been How long have you been at Gordon Heights, brother Matt? 6 years. 6, Six years. years. Brother Matt uh went out from the church I pastored at. Brother Matt was an adult Sunday school teacher. Brother Matt was preaching a good bit filling in. But if it wasn't planned out, Brother Matt might get a last-minute phone call to go fill in or something. 
Brother Matt would not last minute abandon his post without that Sunday school class being taken care of. And They're, clearing it with you. Cl- yes, yes, and Colin. Yeah. There would be times that Brother Matt turned down a lot of opportunities, and I would remind Brother Matt that God was going to honor that. And 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 so what you have to do is if you're if you're laboring in your church – Teaching Sunday school, interacting with people, being a part of the work of the church is going to prepare you. I know you think, well, I want to be in that pulpit. But when you talk about being prepared for ministry, yeah. ministering in the church is great preparation. But you, there's an element of faith there that, I, Lord, I want to do this right. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to trust you to open doors and give those opportunities. And God will do that mm-hmm. when you trust him to do it, do it God's way. Well, well, here's it right. something you wouldn't say. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'll step in and I will say this as an outsider watching this process between you mm-hmm. and Brother Matt. And Brother Matt is one of the finest young men as far as coming out from underneath a, a seasoned pastor and pastoring and mm-hmm. doing well and God opening doors and using him. He's the, you know, he's the poster child for that. Oh, absolutely. To, to be honest. So I have the greatest respect for, for Matthew in, in regard to that. However, his words you wouldn't say that I don't mind taking the heat for. There were other young men in that same church that you pastored who were more interested in paving their own way and making oh, sure. their own way in the ministry, sure. and they're now no longer in the ministry, yeah, nor sad. in the, some of them not even in church. Yes, sir, and so um, you can't go wrong, young men. You mm-hmm. can't go wrong by allowing your pastor... Uh, to give some direction and some leadership uh, to the call of God in your life because he's been there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to pile on. You were getting yeah. ready to say in the Apostle Paul. I was yeah. getting ready to pile on with, with a Bible example. Yeah. Yeah. Paul had the same problem. The only one he could really find that wanted to hang in with him and learn the ministry Timothy. to be prepared for the ministry was Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. And over in Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 20, uh, he says this. Uh, he says, I have no man like mine who would naturally care for your state. For, and here's the key. For all seek their own. That's right. Not the That's things right. which are Christ, or Jesus Christ. It and has so, always church. been a problem yes. in the ministry. You know, And I don't mean anything by this. And this isn't the hurt. This is the hell. But I have young men from time to time who message me or whatever the case may be, if I can ever be a blessing, be a help to you. And what I'm thinking to myself is I hope that your pastor's getting all these same yes, texts and absolutely. messages. And, and honestly, for every young guy out there, if you, you will, if you invest your heart and time right into the ministry and the responsibilities at your church, when it is time, God will open the right doors for you. He knows where you're at. He, he found right. you to save you. He yeah. found you to call you. Yeah. He does not need you now to become a salesman for your ministry. Yeah. Just bloom where you're planted. Yep. And uh, it's always worked well for those guys. You do not have to worry about your future or That's serving. Right. Hey, I'll put right. it to you like this. You say, well, if I, don't, if I want to do something for the rapture takes place or before I die, here, you're going to have more to give account for. You know, the yeah. deeper you get in this thing. So just bloom, yeah. be a good steward over what yeah. you have, and then God will open the right door when it's time. Well, it's, it's God's ministry yeah. that He's yes. given you stewardship, stewardship. over. Yes. It's not your ministry. That's right. It's God's ministry He gave you stewardship over. Yes. And therefore, just like in the parable of the of, of the steward, I can either be a faithful steward or an unfaithful steward, mm-hmm. but it's up to me to do with the you know with what God has given me to steward, yep. it's up to me to do what He would do with it. When, so I've exactly got to right. when I announced my call to preach, I was teaching seven, eight, nine year old Sunday school class at my church, and I showed up every week to teach that class with enth- and and I never took a preaching appointment unless I, I you know I asked my pastor right. and if he was okay right. with it. Yep. Uh, you know that's just the way we run that thing. And I personally believe this: I believe the ministry of Lighthouse Baptist Church has been extremely blessed because of the way I operated and handled under the authority of my right. pastor yep. while. I was there. The I guys believe that. I know that have opened their own door have all crashed and burned. Every one of them. Well, you have to you have to keep it open. If yes. You, if you open the door, mm-hmm. then you got to keep it open, and you've got to supply the power to walk through that door. Yep. But when it's when it's God doing it, he he will. That's he'll, exactly he'll right. That. And yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for the Davids on the backside of the of the, mount, uh, of the desert over there, caring for the little flock, yeah. preparing to go fight the Goliath. God knows God's in that preparation process. Oh, that's Absolutely. right. If you try to bypass the preparation, which is usually you serving at your local church, you'll not be ready That's to fight exactly Goliath right. on the battlefield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. How this is a valuable thing that sometimes gets overlooked. When you go out, okay, for example, Brother Bo Redman. Yes. If he had a need or a problem or in trouble, Lighthouse Baptist Church 
would be loading up and, fly, and buying tickets. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, why is that? Because they watched him honor God. Absolutely. And, and when you go out and, and God maybe puts you in full time or God lets you pastor or whatever it may be, you want not just that pastor, but you want that church in your corner. Absolutely. Oh, That's yeah. invaluable. I mean, just, uh, oh, my goodness. And to have them being able to come. And then maybe God even may let your churches fellowship and join together. But you, if you leave a bad taste in their mouth, because you went back there, preacher, mm-hmm. you went back there. Then you're just going to be you out on your own. Exactly when it came right. time for Brother Bo to get ordained and leave the church, you're talking about, I mean, oh, I the respect that. they had for him and, and the love they had for him. It was like, I mean, it was literally like losing a, you know, just, I mean, uh, you know, he just it was so valuable. He but was. I mean, he, he done right it right. Hand. Yes. Right he was my right arm. Yep. He did it right. And God is honoring that where he's at now. The church is doing phenomenal. Right. And God is blessing, you know, he invested in another man's that, work. That's the point. The point is, yes. and y'all, you don't need to forget this. And here's what here's what Mike's alluding to, and I'm just gonna throw a phrase. Yeah. It's sowing and reaping. Yes. You get back what you put in. Mm. And when you have put in to another man's ministry by using your call to aid and assist him in your local church, when God sends you out, and he will, he's gonna give people like that in your life. Who's going to who's going to sow into your life and into your ministry? That's right. Servants attract servants. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. A little more Bible for that. Before we move on, Luke sixteen twelve, the parable of the unjust steward. In verse twelve of that of that of that text, yeah, whenever he's being scolded for being an unjust steward, he's the Bible says this. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, that's exactly right. Who shall give you that which is your own? Mm-hmm. So whatever your pastor do, gives you to do, don't don't begrudge the day of small things. Yeah. You know, Amen. you're training Amen. right there. And if you can't do that, whenever that phone rings and that preacher says, "Would you come preach?" and you go ask your pastor, and he's like, "No, you can't," because you're saying. Sunday school lessons have been subpar. Mm -hmm. You know, you're missing on, you know, uh, things when you should be here helping the church. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to take that as a season of your growth. Don't change churches the first time you get your feelings hurt. That's what happens. That's what they all do most of the time. And that's why they never amount to nothing pretty much. You know, so it's just sad. That's right. I want to, I want to put something on you with our, with our time left. So you, you both, we've all, we always reference to first getting in the ministry where we are now. What is something that maybe was a fear, a worry, or concern at the beginning of your ministry that the longer you were in it, you just it, it seemed smaller, lighter, and then maybe even something on the other end of that, you know? And, and that's kind of the young man, the young pastor, yeah. and then now the seasoned man yeah. a little bit more, and, and let that turn around. So, brother Michael, if you're ready, I want you to jump on. What was a fear it, in the beginning? Yeah, something that in the beginning was a fear. A Everything. Worry. <laughs> <laughs> What's a fear Honestly, still today? So Everything. You, so you didn't start out with all the answers, did you? No, no, no. Well, uh, before I was ever ordained, I had all the answers. And then the first time I climbed in on that baby, and they wrapped that rope around my arm, I'm like, and they said, open the gate, boys. And I was like, uh, I'm over my head. <laughs> I didn't even ask. I didn't last eight seconds. I didn't last a second. I was on the ground wiping the blood off my face, okay? No, but in all, in all reality, uh, something I feared in the beginning was, was honestly, this, is, this shows my immaturity. I feared being able to get people after they get saved live right and do right, serve the Lord. As an older man, now that I've come into understanding what my role and responsibility is, that fear is not there like it was. You know what I'm saying back then? Because honestly, I can't I can't help if they do or not. I can feed them, I can love them, I can try to lead them, counsel with them, set examples. But if I guess I probably thought God was going to judge me. On their on their on, spirituality, on their spirituality, and uh, I felt like it was I was either successful or unsuccessful based on what they did. Mm. And then the more I learned the scriptures, I'm like, well, hang on a second, that I can't. I, that's not my responsibility. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think that's not. A, I mean, I still your heart still hurts when you see people go the wrong direction, and you know God's best for them is where they need to land, and you want them to land there. Um, but I've tried to I tried I tried to settle this in my mind. Those are his sheep, not mine. Yep. My role is as a caretaker mm-hmm. and and I want to care for them well because I had to give an account for that's that. Right. But that's that's probably that's a fear I had in the beginning that doesn't dominate my life anymore. I guarantee you somebody got help from hearing you say that. I hope I so. You. I, I hope so. You. Brother Annie, what about you, bud? I feared not being prepared enough when I got in the pulpit. Uh, when I first started preaching, I was working sixty and eighty hours a week on a on a secular job and then still having to preach and prepare. Mm-hmm. And so I was up all night long on Saturday nights and would go in fearing that I did not have enough. Wow. 
uh, to feed the flock. Mm-hmm. And I still feel, just nearly every time I step in the pulpit, I still feel as if I am unprepared. Inadequate, yeah. 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 Uh, well, I just had some guys ask about, here a little while back, about balance in light of, I don't think you study too much, but in light of just trying to balance your life out, that some bivocational pastors, every pastor that pastors, pastors full time, right? Mm-hmm. It right. So yes. Some just, they also work on yes, the job. Yes, absolutely. Right? And just trying to talk about, you know, fitting fitting that in. And I just I just made a statement and I said, God is not going to bless laziness. Right. But but at the same time, you giving your best, God God will bless that. And have you have you learned that as well? When you're you're giving it all you can give it mm-hmm. and just not yes. leaving it to chance. Yes. And God takes your little and, and he gets gets yes. in that thing. So yes. I agree there. So well, thank you for joining us again today. And uh, men, thank you for letting Amen. us pick yeah. your brain, being honest. It's been great. Absolutely. Uh, I have been Helped greatly from being the only person we did. The, the, the man with all the answers was not up here. We should have had another microphone, Brother Matthew Tucker. Somebody say, I hey, thought right. you were going to say Tony Finney. Yeah, well, you know, I, <laughs> I, I know would you love to have him on the Tucker. podcast. I would love to have Richard Finney on a podcast. Get him down here. We, 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 we will put him through the ringer. Yeah, we'll, that's exactly right. Yeah. So we'll, <laughs> no, we'll we would not either. No, we would not do that, Brother Finney. No. He's a fine man. We, we, yeah. Yeah, yeah, brother. Right, yeah. That's what yes. he'll always say things like yes. that, brother. Andy. That's what Preacher Finney's favorite phrase about brother. That brother and is different now. He's doing a little different. <laughs> and honestly, some of his favorite his favorite stories are stories I tell him about being in church with you or political venues and all that kind of stuff. So he, he loves hearing about all that stuff. Brother Andy's one of a kind, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today, and until next time, you keep pressing on the upward way. 